So it's finally happening. Here I am at <laughs> Stepney Green Station with the brilliant Tom Bolton. Hello. Who is uh, taking me on a walk along the Black Ditch to promote his new book, which many of you have requested before in videos. You've mentioned this book, Tom's Volume 1 of, uh, what well, you tell us actually, Tom? London's Lost Rivers, Volume 2. So Volume 1 came out about 10 years ago and I finally got around to doing Volume 2. Volume 2 is more obscure rivers than the first set. So the first set, Fleet, Walbrook, Westbourne, Tyburn, the kind of thing that people have maybe heard of, but these are rivers that with any luck no one's heard of. So the Black Ditch is a prime example. Things like the Falcon, the Stamford Brook, the Bolo Brook, the Moselle. Um, this is a, a new book, but there's a new edition of Volume 1 as well, so the two go together. But the, the Black Ditch is um, a new venture, runs through Stepney. It's a an overlooked river, I'd say. It's a river that's not really got the attention it might deserve. Its name suggests that it's been a bit of a problem for a while. And the Black Ditch is really a name for a common sewer. So it's been at the mercy of the East End since the 18th century, really. So is this the uh, start of the route, Tom? It is, yeah. So we're at Stainer, Stainer's Road, which is just next to Stepney Road. Uh, Stepney Green Tube Station. The most mappable bit of the route is something that starts up here behind us, Stainer's Road. And this is an area of breweries. This is Tom's book, a really beautiful object published by the brilliant Strange Attractor Press. You've seen me recently plugging uh, Somnium by Steve Moore, the same publisher that's published this book, Strange Attractor. So Tom, He's dragging around the back of this building site. It's a curious building here. Can you tell me a little bit about what's going on here? Well, so this is the back of the Charrington's Brewery, where there were springs and um, a street which was called Spring Orchard Street. And these have all gone now. But my favourite thing here really is the street that is no longer behind us that was called XX Place. And it was a London curiosity till the uh, between the wars, it was something that was in books of amusing things to go and see in London. The post office would never put XX Place into its street directories, but it was named after XX Mile, double X Mile, Charrington, Charrington's uh, main beer, and it was built for the brewery workers on the site. So it had this sort of um, London Curiosities status, and it was cleared when there was slum clearance around here, and this is a theme that will come across quite a lot, a loss of demolition and slum clearance all the way through Stepney and Poplar. I think now we return back up to, to Marlin Road. The fascination with Lost Rivers, there is a very strong fascination with Lost Rivers. There was a big exhibition at the Museum of London this year. Yeah, exactly. What do you think, where do you think that fascination with Lost Rivers comes from? And, and why do you think there's, it's been a revival recently? The revival's interesting. I think maybe it's people pouring over London in the way that they do. And once you see things starting to gain some attention it, it tends to build a bit and people have started to walk these rivers and think about them and look about them and really it's because they offer a, a key to, to understanding the city around you and a hidden one at that so under the surface you have something you know is there but can only occasionally glimpse which is really quite fundamental to the way that London has developed. Should we cross over here? This is where the river goes. Oh, we're crossing Cross it over Mile End Road. So we're just turning into Beaumont Grove off of uh, Mile End Road opposite Stepney Green Station. We're pretty much dead opposite Stepney Green Station here. Here's Tom just to mark the point. And yeah, this is an interesting looking street. Off we go. Well, this is more or less where the river runs, just to the right of the street. And we're heading into, on the right, yeah, so um, not on the line of Beaumont Grove, but just in the, the back lots. Mm. Not that there's any apparent sign of it now, but we're going into Beaumont Grove, which is on the way to Stepney Green. And Beaumont Square beyond is a very interesting kind of Stepney setting. It's heavily bombed and rebuilt. Tom, I, I, I didn't really do any research for today because I thought that I don't need, this is one day when I can be really justified in yes, doing no reading. But I did read one thing and it chimed with some research I'd done a while ago. The, the, apparently the first mention of the river, any river here, comes from the Anglo-Saxon who established Stepney. Is it Steber? St and it was yeah. called Stebenhide, wasn't it? Or something? Well, this is it. So, although yeah. And he rode up an estuary of, uh, sorry, a tributary of the Thames. Apparently, apparently. So this is why this river is more significant than it might appear. 
although it's called the Black Ditch and turned into a very polluted and uh, unwelcome local river, it is part of the Stepney origin myth. So the thinking that a Saxon called something like Stibber owned property at the waterfront down in Limehouse and that he, row, he, he was able to row up a watercourse in this direction towards Stepney. So Stepney's older name is Stebenheath. It has this, this other existence and although we don't seem to be very close to the river here, the Thames, we are really in terms of distance but also in terms of connections. So this is a tributary of the Thames which was maybe wider, maybe more functional, maybe something that people could access when the Thames is wider and these rivers were more significant, less drainage. Turning into Morecambe Close, E1. Where do we go now? So you go, we go through Morecambe Close and we follow. Through the States and then set the greens on the other side. So these buildings, Tom, are quite interesting, aren't they? Yeah, and you get a really good view of them around the side, but we're coming in from the back because the river goes behind these blocks. And this is dwellings built for Jewish artisans on a significant scale as well. So kind of early council housing, effectively, when London was started to put up these sorts of institutional blocks. So, Tom, where does the course of the river go here at Stepney Green? Where, where are we? Well, it joins the green from... Uh, these back streets, but the green is a long river-shaped leftover, really, a bit of green space that clearly represents something that was here before the houses were built. So it seems like there was water here, possibly wider than it is now. And certainly the stream runs along the length of the green, along its top edge here, the north edge, all the way to the church further on. So we cross the road here. So this is a ruined gatehouse that's the remains of a Baptist chapel bombed during the war. But this is on the site of another ruined gatehouse, effectively. It used to be Great Place, which was a significantly large Tudor mansion, uh, probably where Thomas Cromwell spent most of his time when he was Henry VIII's uh, main right-hand man. So we go down this street here, do we? We do, down Stepney High Street to St Dunstan's Church, which is just over there. The river's following us oh. all the way. It's turning with this street and then passing the church just on the other side there. So we just take this path here beside the church. This is an interesting street here isn't it Tom? These houses are quite interesting. Yeah so on the left you've got the leftover houses from before the war. This area was blitzed and cleared but before the war indeed the late 19th century it was called Peddler's Orchard uh, and this appears in the booth survey so there's discussion here about costers and thieves and um, good-for-nothings they didn't really mince their words in the booth su survey and of course hatless women and their doors left open and bread left lying around in the street so these are all taken as signs of poverty and it was certainly a poor neighborhood um, but the area has completely vanished, except for this, this set of houses. The rest of it was, uh, was entirely destroyed. The river runs, though, along this street, uh, past the churchyard behind us, continues along this road. What's interesting, Tom, and what this really highlights, this, so the fascination with Barrow Rivers, is I've walked past this street a few times without knowing at all that, the, that there was a river running beneath the street here, beneath these cobblestones. So it really enhances that understanding of this landscape because you're yeah. drawn to buildings like that one there which is a really kind of lovely striking bit of architecture and this one here but of course beneath the stones here is a river and that you can't see obviously you would never know it's particularly mysterious in this sort of landscape because it's it's flat it's down by the river it's probably quite marshy at one stage so you don't see the undulations that you get in other parts of London that show you there's a river valley. So you have to take a lot more of faith here and the maps, the maps from the late 18th century, it still shows something before these streets were built up. But it is down there in the sewer system, in a storm sewer in fact, that's where these rivers are channeled, they're, they're channeled through the storm sewer system because it's pretty hard to stop a river from flowing, much easier to redirect it. You 
can see the shape of the land here. We're going downhill, aren't we? You can, yeah, and suddenly we've got a bit more of a, a valley and we're, we're turning down the street to the right, Halley Street, but the ditch crosses over the road in front of us and goes north of Halley Street between there and Ben Johnson Road, which is the main road beyond. So it's actually the property boundaries of the properties that face onto Ben Johnson Road and those that face onto Halley Street. You often find this, that Lost Rivers are still visible on the map in terms of the fence lines behind whole rows of houses, whole streets. And often they form boundaries, so constituency boundaries, uh, borough boundaries. If you start to look at the shapes of a lot of London boroughs, they're determined essentially by the rivers that used to run either side of them. So we've got these houses, interwar council houses, on one side of the road, but on the other, opposite them, where there's now just a school, there was a neighbourhood with another distinct identity picked up in the Booth survey in some detail called Donkey Row. And that was somewhere that was said to be as bad as Notting Dale. And Notting Dale was the worst neighbourhood in London. There are plenty of contenders for the worst Victorian neighbourhood. But they, that was what they were trying to say. It wasn't a very nice place. And this seemed to be mostly because people's jobs were based on the haddock industry. It was a haddock curing district. So there were carts of haddock outside people's houses. And it was a very precarious way to earn a living because the price of haddock was extremely variable apparently and you only made money from haddock when the price was low so it wasn't a good way to make a, to make a living yet the whole, the whole mini neighbourhood here depended on haddock. Tom, Tom's picked up on the fact that this block of flats here is called Waterview House. Yeah, I, it seems highly appropriate because it's by the Black Ditch which runs past it but since it's been underground since the early 19th century, it's hard to really make the connection between this, um, this name and the location. I think maybe it's just spirit of place taking over. Um, and you certainly can't see the Black Ditch from it, but it is there. We turn left at Waterview House. And now we're heading towards the canal, towards the Bridge. Bridge. Bendelson Road and then cross over where the gasworks used to be and the Ragged School Museum as well. The, the river must also cross the canal, it's probably underneath it. Most of London's rivers had at some stage been put underneath the canal because the canals cut across the, the roots of pretty much every watercourse. So Victorians tended to put them underneath and channel them into pipes. Coming down to the point where the Black Ditch turns, it, it starts to curve south and it's a big curved watercourse so by the time you get down to the end of it it's come back on itself all the way to Limehouse. And here it turns under the canal and goes alongside it through what was once Roadswell Common which is a bit of open space that had a, a pond on it which fed the river and from this point down to the river at the Thames, it's more substantial, there's more water flowing down, you can see it's wider, so it's clearly fed by the, the roads well. So this is Roadswell Common, which is now a bit of open space beside the canal. And this is where there was a pond, a large pond shown on pre-development maps in the, from the mid-18th mid century, no houses here, just a pond. And that fed the river, but the area was built up, so this was developed, it was covered in streets, Victorian streets, it was an industrial area and then it was bombed and then cleared again. So here in Mile End Park across the road are a huge area of neighbourhood clearance, partly to create open space and also to demolish housing that was seen as unfit after the war. So the change here has been baffling really. And there are three churches in this area that were knocked down, three schools, a whole series of streets, but it's now revealed roads well common again. turn left after the railway bridge and then we head towards that tower block there. So Tom's just pointed out the stink pipe over there. Victorian stink pipe indicates the course of the sewer and consequently indicates the course of the river. So here we have St Paul's Way and the Gate of Heaven. And we go down the street here. So we're at the corner here where the river turns again, it's always turning the Black Ditch, but it's under the street here, so behind us in the middle of the road is a round drain cover, round iron grating. 
which is very hard to examine. I have done it, but I don't recommend it because there's traffic coming from every direction at any given time. But underneath it, there is the, the black ditch. It's down there. You can see something, you can hear something. So there's a lot more evidence here now that there's a river involved. And it turns the corner as part of its looping journey towards Limehouse. Here we are on the Limehouse cut. And Tom, this, what can you tell us here? So the Black Ditch crosses the canal here. It looks like it goes over on a big pipe beside the bridge, but unfortunately it's a gas pipe. The, the river must go underneath the canal and you can't see it. But this is Stinkhouse Bridge, and Stinkhouse Bridge is locally named because of the, the factories around here. So tanneries, canning works, uh, breweries. So it was apparently a, a strong smell that was kind of a bit spicy, a bit sort of fruity, but predominantly a bit ammonia -y, which is a pretty clear you know, picture of what was going around here, a lot of industry, a lot of industry by the canal in particular. So it's not here anymore. The gas works site behind us redeveloped, but the river is still here, flowing underneath everything else. Anything there, Tom? This is a Poplar Borough Council grating, and underneath, quite a long way down, so I think about 15, 20 feet down, there is a river, you can see a channel, and it is moving. So this is where the Black Ditch turns the corner and goes through the estate to our left, and this is the point here. After the manhole cover, we turn left into, what's the name of that street, Tom? Augusta Street. Augusta Street. Off we go. It's kind of steady rain now, so you can see smudges on the lens, that's the rain. I'm having to keep putting the camera away in my pocket to keep it alive and stop it dying in the rain. Something about river walks and rain. So this is the Lansbury Estate, which is quite a famous post-war housing development. I should believe architects rate quite highly, don't they? We're, we're kind of winding through the back streets of the Lansbury Estates. This is Cordelia Street that we're crossing. And the river goes through what is now quite a grid-like set of streets laid out after the First World War, part of the Festival of Britain development here. So a model estate, uh, but the river m makes its way behind the blocks and across the streets and um, all the way down to... West India Dock Road. So Tom, what can you tell me here? We've got a stink pipe in the street here by Elgin House. Yeah, just uh, on the corner there, big tall Victorian, nice light green stink pipe, which shows that we're on the, the route of this river, even though we're kind of dodging behind the estates and the backs of blocks and along streets of no names, we're still following a course and that shows us we're, we're on the right, the right route. So we're just turning now into Annabelle Close. Heading towards the looming towers of Canary Wharf. So this is this is literally called Unnamed Alley. Yep. But it, it well, is just an unnamed alley. It is an unnamed alley. It runs past Mayfire Primary School and over the open space on the other side. So the river takes a turn here. It's always turning this river, always turning away from the course you think it's on. It also goes past the primary school which was rebuilt slightly to the north of the site it was on before after the previous school was was destroyed by a Zeppelin during the, the Blitz. It's on the worst incidents of bombing in the First World War and um, lots of children were killed. The primary school was hit by uh, a bombing raid. So this was a notorious site for, for a long time until the, sort of, the bombing of the First World War was overshadowed by the bombing of the Second World War and kind of forgotten in many ways. So now we, uh, we cut across this park here towards the busy road on the far side. And this is, uh, this is Saltwell Street. Saltwell? Saltwell? I'll put the correct name on the, on the screen here. So Tom, we've got an interesting artefact in the landscape here. Well, we're starting to see places here where the river is unmistakable. And this is a location where there was a pub. The, the White Horse above us is the only remnant of the White Horse pub which was on this site. And this was a stop-off point for horses. There was uh, water here available because of the stream, so it was a watering point. And there's also a bridge over the river called the Stone Bridge because it was wide enough, clearly by this stage, to need a bridge across it. So Poplar High Street behind us crossed the river on the Stone Bridge. After the White Horse, we turn right and we head down uh, this street here. This is Ming Street and then Pennyfield, so Ming Street is a sign this is once Chinatown. It was called King Street and its name was changed to Ming Street to reflect the, the Chinese locality. And then Pennyfields is one of the famous streets of East End, Limehouse, Chinatown, which made it into myth in, a, in literature in a way that became 
slightly bizarre, really. The, the myth of the place, the opium, the, the fog, the dubious dealings, a lot of kind of racist undertones which became racist overtones. But this is the place it all happened. Very ordinary looking street, but with an enormous reputation in, in Western culture, really. river down there so you can really hear the water down there you can see the, the water passing you can hear a, a real rush of sound from the drain cover so there's, a, there's suddenly a lot of water under our feet oh yeah we're just in the drop road and we are just uh, crossing over and going beneath that um, bridge there yeah it's the street the former Warren of Streets around here on Chuzan Place. And this turns up in the Booth survey, it features as somewhere that's a, a den of criminals. And essentially you can get your property stolen on the West India Dock Road and the person who'd taken it would jump the wall into Chuzan Place and disappear off down there. And the police weren't too keen on following it, apparently. Opposite the Salvation Army, we turned right to follow the uh, Doctors Light Railway. So this is Limehouse Causeway, which was the, the high street of Limehouse Chinatown during the mid to late 19th century, up until the Second World War when the whole area was cleared following bombing. But this is the place where there were facilities for sailors, effectively, Chinese sailors who spent time on shore, having come on ships owned by the East India Company, turning around going back to the east again. So there were places for them to stay and facilities for them and uh, social associations, benevolent associations, that kind of thing. Uh, this got blown up into much more than it was by the, the myths around, around the East End and its, its oriental mysteries, but the reality was, was functional. One of the things when you're making one of these walking videos with somebody else is that you always end up behind them and then you've got to go and, and try and catch up with them and find them. I don't know where Tom is. He's gone off. Oh no! Here he is. Here he is, opposite the sign that gives it Lime Kiln Wharf. Yeah. Lime Kiln Wharf. And the river specialist dry cleaners next door. Are you saying this is, is this the end of the river? Yeah, so Lime Kiln Wharf is actually where the river comes out into the open for the first time. The other side of these buildings is a little creek, which you can only get to by going all the way around and onto the Thames Path. But this is the back of the wharf buildings, and this is industry that's built around the very mouth of the river. This is 1930s building, but most of this is much earlier. And it's from when it was Limehouse Hall, this neighbourhood. Limehouse Hall was a kind of uh, maritime setting, people making all sorts of bits and pieces for boats and offloading and unloading. So this is very much river traffic down here, and suddenly the Black Ditch forms part of that, of that overall picture. So we're going to walk now along a little bit of the Thames Path, so we can actually see the Black Ditch, where it emerges in Lime Kiln Wharf. Just, this is just always a great moment when you get to this bend in the Thames. The expanse of it really hits you, doesn't it, Tom? It sort of yeah, it, it opens right out. Takes you by surprise. I always feel like you're, this is the point where you feel like you're looking out to sea, but this is, you know, the, the idea of the Thames for, for Britain being the gateway to the world. Yeah, yeah. this is where you can see the sea traffic that was once here, and you can understand how this river could have been so busy. There's so much space, it's suddenly, suddenly huge. So here we are, Tom. And this finally is the Black Ditch coming out into the Thames. This is the creek, Lime Kiln Dock, where the river flowed above ground into the, into the Thames. It's now underground in the sewer system, but the, the creek is still here. It's a tidal creek. You can see it's filled two-thirds up with, with the River Thames because the tide is, is rising. So here is clear evidence that there was a river and that it did shape the place that it, that it ran through, and that there is still a river in many ways, at least the ghosts of one, quite visible just here. And there's a proper bridge over it. It's big enough to need a bridge, so that's enough to, to prove it's a river. Anything with a bridge over it is definitely, definitely for real. So thank you so much to Tom Bolton for taking us on this walk along the Black Ditch, one of London's lost rivers. So we must uh, plug the book now at the end of the video. So this is London's Lost Rivers, volume two, available from Stranger Tractor Press. It's a walker's guide. 
um, all good bookshops as well, and there's a new updated version of Volume 1 to go with it.